Hey guys, Tezia and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my favourite recipe that I learnt when I went veggie for Lent. Now, I've been a pescatarian since January 2020, so that means I've only been eating seafood and no meat or chicken, and for Lent this year I decided to go vegan, but sadly I could not last 24 hours without milk. Now, I'm lactose intolerant, so I do have lactose-free milk, but I like the taste in my hot chocolates and my tea, and I also really like cheese, so I couldn't do it. So I decided to just do vegetarian instead, which is really sad because I thought I could do it, but at the same time, I think it's your intention that matters more than what action you choose to do to show it. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention that I didn't stop eating meat for any religious or ethical reasons. I just decided to stop because I felt like I needed to take a break. Um, it wasn't because I wanted to lose weight or because I suddenly realised how they kill animals and it's really sad. No, I mean, I... W I like meat, okay? I just stopped doing it just to give myself a challenge and luckily I managed to do it for more than 12 months. But after Lent, uh, which will be on Sunday, I'm going to stop and I'm just going to be me, meaning I'm going to eat all the meat that I want in the world. Um, so if you see me in Nando's munching on some chicken, mind your own because the streets are calling my name. I am going to the streets. I don't know about you guys, but before I make food, I always like to make myself a drink, so I'm just making myself a hot chocolate, and I usually add hot water before I add some milk, and then I add a little bit more hot water to make it hotter, because the milk makes it a bit cold. <laughs> so first you preheat the oven to 200 degrees or gas max 6, and then you put two oven trays ready. Now I actually forgot to uh, record in the beginning, so I'm just showing you the ingredients that you need for the marinade, which are um, ground coriander, cumin, chili powder, garam masala, salt, garlic, and ginger. So that's when you just put in the ginger in there and then you just put it to one side. So ideally I would have cut the garlic cloves before I started but I forgot so I'm just doing that now and then after I've cut them up I'm going to add them to the marinade uh, and mix it all together and then I'll just set it to one side ready for the recipe at the end. So next I'm just preparing the onions. Um, you need two red onions that are halved and cut into one centimeter wedges. So I'm just preparing them now and I tend to peel the onions until it looks more fleshy than flaky from the skin if that makes sense. So I do peel a few layers. I don't know if other people do that but I feel like that's what you're meant to do. I'm also a super sensitive Stacey so while I was cutting these onions my eyes started watering really really bad. Look at me! <laughs> Next, I'm just going to get the cauliflower and break it into florets and um, I think I used like 600 grams so I got two of those packs because I couldn't find like a full cauliflower stalk or whatever it's called so I just got the packet ones but I feel like it's cauliflower anyway so it's fine. So next I'm just going to wash it and clean up. And I like to clean up as I go along because I feel like it makes my life easier. So I'm just tidying up the mess that I've made so far. And then next we have the potatoes. So I think you're meant to get just any potatoes, 300 grams worth and peeled and cut. But I got the baking potatoes because I'm quite lazy and I feel like I'm baking it anyway. So why go through the effort of peeling them when you can buy ones that are already peeled? So next we have the paneer. Now I picked the wrong one. You can pick paneer that's already cut into cubes but I wasn't paying attention and I picked this one so I had to cut it into cubes myself but it wasn't too bad. So I'm just going to cut it into cubes and pretend that this never happened. Moving on from that I got my baking tray and I put some foil into it and so you separate the produce or whatever you want to call it and in one tray you put your onions and your paneer and then you put the cauliflower and the potatoes onto another so I'm just bobbing the paneer into that one and then there's my second one where I'm going to put the cauliflower and the potatoes. So I didn't do a good job of eyeballing this can you see how full that is so I had to transfer it onto a bigger baking tray so I'm just doing the process again but this time I'm making sure that everything lays flat on the tray because you want it to get equal amounts of heat or whatever I think I don't know so after I've 
re-poured everything into the correct trays I'm just going to spread it all out before I get my marinade and you're meant to put 50% in the cauliflower and 50% in the paneer now I would recommend maybe you put like 70% in the cauliflower and potatoes and then 30% in the paneer and onions because the paneer and onions doesn't need as much sauce and the potatoes seem to soak up the marinade a lot so I actually had to tip over the a marinade jar that I used to get more in there because it just felt like it was lacking compared to the paneer and the onions. This is probably the worst part for me because I don't like getting my hands dirty and the marinade is super gritty because of all the spices but anyway I just had to do it because it's what the recipe suggested so I'm just mixing it all up and after that you're going to put it into your oven which I've already preheated and I think you put the onions and paneer tray at the top and the cauliflower and potatoes in the middle and you just roast it for 25 minutes or until the cauliflower and potatoes are tender and blackening then you remove both trays. I'm just going to wash my hands because ew. So while that's cooking I just need to add some chopped vine tomatoes now you need 500 grams and i only got half of that because i already had a packet of cherry tomatoes and because i live alone if i don't use the ingredients i already have then they expire so i'm just chopping them all up ready to put into the tray when it's ready so now that both trays are done i'm going to get them both out of the oven and then i'm going to add the cherry tomatoes or vine tomatoes even into the onions and paneer tray and then i'm going to mix it all together so it's all blended nicely and then i'll return that tray into the oven for another 15 minutes so the cherry tomatoes get cooked so while that's cooking for another 15 minutes i'll just cover this tray so that the potatoes stay warm and after that i'm going to take the tray out from the okay sis can you not cover how hard is it to cover come on tez you can do it there we go so now i'm just going to add the potatoes into the other tray so they're all in the same tray and there we go i just burnt myself like the true amateur that i am anyway i'm just going to mix it all together with my spoon just to make sure everything's all blended nicely and then i might add a little bit of salt and a little bit of lemon just to make it I think the lemon wakes up the spices whatever that means I don't know if that's what I said in the recipe book that the lemon wakes up the spices now you are meant to add chopped coriander on top but I have the superior gene where coriander tastes like soap so I do not have it but if you have the inferior gene and you can tolerate coriander then feel free sis eat the soap away ew so that's pretty much it and you can either have it with naan bread or rice or rotis or whatever. Now I didn't actually take a picture off my plate because I was too hungry but here's just a basic picture and can you see how beautiful that looks? So that was the roast curry I was talking about. Um, I'm going to put the recipe in the description box in case you want to follow it along. Let me know what you think if you make it and I hope you enjoy that video. Moving on to book of the video which is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. Now I really enjoyed reading this book and it's about this black lady who gets hired by a white couple to be the babysitter. The white couple has a saviour complex because they feel like because they've given a black person a job they deserve the world and it just follows how sometimes people think they're being helpful but really they're feeling the stereotypes that are often associated with black people so it's really interesting it's a it's not as deep as I'm making it sound it's quite light but I really enjoyed it and if you want an easy read I would highly recommend it anyways thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any questions just drop them in the comment box below and I'll respond and until next time bye for now so something sad really happened um, my plant got infected and I had to trim it um, so I trimmed two of them However, we got a new baby. So you see, so yay to new growth. I don't want to touch it just in case I make it dirty.